Radio Yeditepe. Good day, dear listeners. I'm Fehmi Cesur Özdemir, broadcasting from Radio Yeditepe. Today we are celebrating World Radio Day, conducted by the UNESCO, and our focus is on radio's place in the formation of dialogue, tolerance and peace. Our guest is Professor Dr. Meltem Erinçman Kanoğlu. Welcome to this special broadcast, Professor Kanoğlu. Nice to be here. We are in the world of fast information flow of the Internet, and yet we are still talking about radio. Why do you think radio is still a working communication medium? Oh, well, radio is a long-going medium for many voices. It is audio, so not only text. It is not visual, so it means cheaper production. Now, with the help of the Internet, it is a technologically adaptable media device, so we will still have radio for some time. Of course, with the invention of the newspapers, the desire of political authorities to reach masses, to bring about ideas, to make them accept these ideas, manipulate them, and even make these ideas applicable have been a purpose, as we know. Those possessing the mass communication devices have the power to influence the mass with them. And radio has been, and still is, a jewel to reach out the masses for many different goals. So we may quote from a song that says, radio, someone still loves you. How did we come to know radio? Taking Turkey's acquaintance with the television as late as 1960s and knowing that the press has been used as a mass culture device for centuries, radio is an Interesting medium to study, actually. It's been with Turkish people since 1927, and it began its life as a new medium of young Turkish Republic's modernization, while it was on the on its no- top notch. Um, as there has been only the national radio between 1927 and 1990, and bearing in mind that during this period there had been political changes from a single party system to multiple party system, and was followed by a military coups, uh, two of them actually, and uh, national radio's utilization by various political authorities and their cultural policies uh, are issues that we need to look at. Um, therefore, we may say that the way the radio was used in the period will determine that period's political uh, and uh, cultural policies. That's interesting. Could you tell us a bit more about the radio's history in Turkey and its utilization regarding culture policies? Well, from its start in 1927 to 1990, Turkish national radio will be righteously put in the category being under control of state government system. Here, the organization of radio is directly or indirectly in the hands of the state of government. Of course, we're talking about a national radio. Although during certain periods, like the Democratic Party government and the 1960s and 1980 military coup d'etats, its control was either controlled by the government itself or by the military forces. So in the years between 1927 and uh, 1946, uh, 1964 to 1971 and uh, 1970, 83 to 1990, the radio was of state conduct, which the public broadcasting aimed to meet the transmission of information, education, entertainment, and cultural needs of the public. Um, until the year 1936, the broadcast hours were limited to three to four and a half hours each day, usually in the evenings. Uh, the speech-based programs and music-based programs were in majority, which caused criticism to the radio broadcasting of the period, because those who were for the idea of state using radio as an education medium perceived it as a social device and argued that the radio was turned into an entertainment medium with the predominantly broadcast of music-based programs. Oh. Really? Why was that? Possibly to acquaint the mass with the Western music as it was 
in this period, culture policy was the was to make the public aware of the intercultural arts and encourage them to read, listen to the pieces of other cultures. Even the translations were source text oriented, so to bring about the essence of different cultural features and make them vivid in the minds of the readers or in radio's part of minds. Uh, the programs from foreign radio stations such as Vienna, Budapest, um, Paris and Moscow were being uh, listened to. Uh, many radio plays were broadcast in the sense of culturally opening the minds of Turkish people outside its boundaries. Uh, this, of course, brought an understanding of the different meanings generated by different societies, which means understanding each other better. It may not be an interpersonal communication, but it certainly was an intergroup communication where parts communicating came to understand each other in a much more lively way. So we may call this a very creative effort of or way of forming dialogue between cultures. So you mean to say that in the beginning, Turkish radio focused its broadcasting policy on intercultural dialogue? Well, partly it was. But it is interesting again that in these two years, 1935 and 36 programs focusing on Turkish literature, Turkish language, meteorology even, agriculture, apiculture, national economics, science, labor were broadcast. Thus, programs were both encouraging to Western ways of life and the modernization of the society by educating it in various fields. Or we could say the pedagogically enhanced programs were broadcast. As World War II was approaching, Turkish national radio uh, broadcast a number of speech-based programs. Uh, and uh, speech-based programs increase in number. Although educational programs continued to be broadcast, nationalism and patriotism was uh, to be considered important regarding the morale of the society as the World War II was at the threshold. Then again, radio plays held a significant place in the program schedules. We know that radio was used as a great propaganda device in World War II. Was it the case for Turkey as well? During Second World War, with the understanding of the radio's power as a propaganda device, a need to concrete all mass media propaganda devices, to inspect them, to protect the mass from the harmful propaganda, and to use these devices for national welfare came about as a cultural policy. And they said it was broadcasting information for the good of the society. Thus, a uh, Directorate General of Press and information adherent to the Prime Ministry was formed. Uh, it was also the time when censorship was applied to the speech-based programs and radio could not function freely because it became a part of the government offices. Famous and qualified people in music and arts were recruited uh, to promote side of radio usage in favor of the government in this period. Radio broadcasting focused on cultural policies of making reforms in economical and cultural fields, the distribution of the classical arts among the masses as well. It must have been a good way to keep the masses mind uh, away from the war that made itself felt thoroughly in all its parts. What about interesting era when political system changed from single party regime to multiple party system? 1950s are the milestone of Turkish radio once again. While in the world post-war strides were on the way, such as space age, baby boom, space wars, we went through a political system change from single party system to multiple party system. During this time, radio was an important medium of imposition for the state. Social psychology and pedagogical usage was the objective of the government. At first, different political sides were allowed to debate on radio, but later, between the years 1946 and 60, Turkish national radio was strictly under control of the ruling party and different voices were cut out as they were considered to be harmful to the policies of the government.
However, conversely, programs promoting, promoting NATO and Marshall Plan, which Turkey was a part of as a recipient, were widely broadcast. During this period, the national radio has signed uh, cultural agreements with BBC, Voice of America and English Culture Committee uh, and adapted speech and music-based programs. Still, there was nine radio drama programs and other ones varying from religion to military forces hour and even tourism competitions. Was radio always under state supervision? No, there were changes in May 1960. The army took control with the military coup d'etat, starting a tradition of temporary takeover and then handling uh, the control of the state to the civilians. We must note that government's monopoly of the radio as its propaganda device was shown as one of the factors of this military coup d'etat. From experience, Uh, radio propaganda and manipulating power was well known in this period. And so uh, with new constitution in 1961, certain laws were initialized to secure the radio from such applications and guarantee its impartiality. What kind of reflections occurred on radio practice? Between the years 1960 and 64, by the way, radio's organization structure was re-established. And again, there were quite a number of various programs now, from economics to arts, from education to sports. And there was even a program about sexual education, which led the radio to audit programs in 1966. Uh, this means that the letters from the readers shaped the information given on the radio, which was now three channels. Moreover, the insights of the programs provided a medium for freedom of thought and speech. The broadcasting was autonomous. But then, due to political tensions, economical crisis, high inflation, and government's inability to solve the problems in this era, uh, brought about the uh, military coup d'etat of 1980. So a new constitution uh, in 1982 was uh, made, setting and organizing the radio and television broadcasting by law. Here, radio became impartial and objective, but not autonomous. Uh, however, with a number of guidelines, governmental interference to uh, national radio was tried to be blocked. During this period again, national insights in the programs were equal to international insights, uh, making radio an international web of information flow. In 1990 sets the time of private radios, which shaped the multi-voice democratic uh, broadcasting with many uh, private radios. So in summary, Turkish national radio is periodically a government utility or a state-conducted establishment until 1990. You have mentioned radio plays a number of times. What is the significance of radio plays in the life of radio? Radio plays are audio narratives. They require the listeners to work with the play. It tickles the minds of the listeners to imagine the visual of the play. So the ambience, the place, time, characters, gestures, and actions all depend on the listener's state of mind and the moment of the sound reception. As narratives such as sagas, stories, Legends, novels, Roman philotons, TV serials or movies are the best ways to transmit messages of any sort. Radio plays have been employed widely to form and conduct dialogue between the listeners or the mass and the sender. I think a radio play is the best way to form and maintain dialogue for tolerance and peace between masses. Don't you think? Certainly. Well, I hope you have enjoyed our special broadcast brought to you by Yeditepe University Radio to celebrate World Radio Day. Thank you, Professor, for being with us. Well, it's been a pleasure. I thank you. Dear listeners, you may go to the links and listen to the students' radio play projects and have some nice time. I'm Fehmi Cesur Özdemir, broadcasting from Radio Yeditepe. Wish you a good World Radio Day.
Radio Yeditepe Radio Play Weird Coincidence Louis Mirella Tacic Claire Christina Ackerman David Bruna Motta Oh no, I lost my wallet. I just had it in my hand. Tree, let's go to the bench where we were sitting. Louise, Louise, wait. Who is that? You lost your wallet. I found it over there. Oh, thank you so much. I was just looking for it. You're welcome. Well, have a nice day. Bye. Uh, yeah, you too. Bye. the strawberries. Oh, too bad. You grabbed the last one. Hey, you're the guy who found my wallet. Ha, ah, you're the girl who lost her wallet. <laughs> yeah, what a coincidence p- to bump into you here. But since you found my wallet, I want to pay you back by giving you the strawberries. So, here you go. Oh, no, thank you. You should keep them. I'll take something else. Do you have any suggestions? Hmm, if I were you, I would take the oranges. They seem really fresh. Oh, okay, then I'll go with the oranges. Thanks for your advice. Hey, um, would you like to grab a cup of coffee? I would like to do something for you since you found my wallet, so... Oh, no, thank you. I'm kind of busy today. But maybe next time, all right? Um, yeah, okay, sounds good. Bye. Bye. Hello. Oh, hey, Claire, how are you? I'm fine. Hey, you know, I had this weird experience. I've been bumping into this guy for the second time this week, and the first time he found my wallet in the park, and the second time I met him at the supermarket. Oh, yeah, and then I asked him something really stupid. I asked him to join me for a cup of coffee, and he said no. And I feel like an idiot. Yeah, I'm happy I got rid of Joey. He was a creep, but... I need something else to think about, but being rejected isn't really a good thing, you know. Yeah, I like him. He's attractive, but... I don't know, there's something about him. Oh my god! No, no, this can be... I just saw him walking into my street, like... No, 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 this can be, that would be really weird. Yeah, yeah, just laugh at me, I'm not paranoid. Or am I? But, okay, enough about me, what have you been up to this week? I'm so sorry, Twiggy. I had an exhausting day at work, but I'll make it up to you. I'm taking you for a long wa- night walk at the beach, okay? Okay, let's go then. I didn't know that it would be such a long walk here. You're tired, aren't you? Yeah, me too. Let's rest a little bit and then go back home. It's getting really late. What is it, Twiggy? Twiggy? Oh, 
it's you. Uh, so this is getting a little bit weird already, huh? What are you doing here in the middle of the night? Hi again. I was just passing by and saw you sitting here. Huh. I want to say hi, but apparently your dog doesn't like me much. Yes, I know. It's a little bit strange. He's usually really friendly. Twiggy, stop that. Shh. Ha, ah, he's a real life savior, isn't he? Listen, my car's parked over there. If you aren't too tired to walk, I can offer you a ride home. Oh, that would be really nice of you. Thanks. I just thought that it's not nice to walk back alone in the middle of the night. Good, so let's go. Twiggy, come here, Roy. Let's go home. This is really a weird coincidence, isn't it? I mean, first the wallet, then the shop, and all this in one week. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's strange. So, after all this, you know my name, but I still don't know yours. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know your name. How would I? Um... Remember in the park, when you found my wallet, you called me by my name? I thought you checked it from my wallet. Oh yeah, that, I forgot about that. My name's David. You forgot? Um, okay. I'm Louise. Nice to meet you, David. So, David, what do you do for your living? Uh, well, I'm sort of a freelancer and a researcher. Nothing interesting, really. Okay then, <sighs> but <laughs> you're not a big talker, aren't you? Oh, I love this song. Can you put it louder? This love is taking its toll. She said goodbye. What? We already arrived? Wait a minute, how did you know where I live? I never told you my address. Um, yeah, yeah you did. You told me when, when, when we left from the beach. No, I did not. I'm sure of that. And you're really freaking me out now, so what's going on? Oh, uh, nothing's going on. You, you just told me, that's it. I would remember if I did. And I know that something weird is going on, so please tell me. Otherwise, I will call the police. Um, okay, okay, just calm down. Do you know Joey? Joey Manizra? Oh my god, Joey is my ex-boyfriend, of course I know him. What does that have to do with, with anything? Um, we went to school together many years ago. A couple of weeks ago, we accidentally bumped into each other. He told me a lot of awful things about you, about how you treated him bad and cheated on him while you were dating. And somehow he got me to, the, he got me convinced to follow you around and get back at you. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! I, I knew that he was crazy, but this, this is, this is really scary. I'm really sorry, Louise. I didn't want this to happen. I just somehow understand that he's not a good guy anymore, and that he was lying about you. I thought then that I will do it for all time's sake, as he's uh, an old friend. Now I know that I shouldn't have done this. I'm really sorry. Ugh, he's sick, and you're not any better. <sighs> I feel nauseous. I can't believe this. I have to go home. So, he just hired a guy to follow you? Oh my god, that is really sick. Yeah. I knew that he was a freak, but a psychopath? I got really scared. Oh, that's really a mess. But I'm happy that you are safe. So, did you ever see David again after that night? No, of course not. There's re really something wrong with him also, because why would he go along with a scheme like this? But in a weird way, I, I kind of miss bumping into him accidentally. Excuse me, where can I find the book of Milan Kundera? What is the title of the book? The Unbearable Lightness of Being. It's on the road 13F by the author's surname.
Okay, thank you. 15, 14, 13, and the K is in Kundera. Yes, I found it. you again are you still stalking me Shh. oh no honestly i didn't even know that you were here i'm sorry i'll move to another place Shh. oh you're also reading this another coincidence huh this is already ridiculous i thought i am the only one still reading kundera yeah i love his work i read everything he wrote somehow i've just been thinking of this book lately and i had to come here and search for it yeah the same for me the Unbearable Lightness of Being is an amazing book about different people, about the light and the weight. And of course, about the unpredictability of life. Yeah, I know. Did you read his novels? They're so great. Especially the one of them that's about the two people going on the holiday.